AMD might take a hot minute to boot up on Ryzen 7000. USB 4.2 or 4 version 2 or I don't know, there's a new USB version that we're gonna talk about and Intel's flagship GPUs are coming very soon. Before we get into the hot news though, I wanna remind you that we have our meme review that we live stream over on Twitch every single week. So if you wanna submit memes for us to review, you could do so over at our subreddit, which is linked in the video description. But twist, okay, we have the upcoming Cannonball for the Cure charity stream that's taking place in October. And if you start watching our streams now, you will get points for future giveaways. And actually we're gonna be doing a special prize before we start the Cannonball. We're gonna give away my Aya Neo Air that I just received for review. That's gonna be given away before the Cannonball happens. So you should be incentivized to come watch the streams, participate in meme review, as well as all of the test streams that I'm gonna be doing in order to get ready for the Cannonball. So go follow us over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Submit your memes in case you want to participate in that and win an Aya Neo Air. We'll have more giveaways for the actual event, but I want to help incentivize people to at least keep me company as I'm doing all of the testing. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. In today's top story, we're going to be discussing some aspects of the upcoming AMD launch with regards to how long it might take to boot up your PC at first boot. So on testing an ASRock X670E motherboard, it was found that these motherboards have stickers on them that tell you just how long you should expect the first boot to take. So quite intriguingly, if you only have two 16 gig sticks, it was only going to take 100 seconds when you first turn this bad boy on. Just a minute 40, no big deal. You got two 32 gig sticks, that's gonna take you 200 seconds or just north of three minutes. You got four 32 gig sticks, my friends. Well, that's gonna cost you 400 seconds or just north of six minutes. And I honestly, if I didn't ever look at the sticker on a motherboard, which I'm inclined to gloss over, especially with my eyeballs not paying attention to things while I'm doing PC builds, that would terrify me if my PC didn't boot for six and a half minutes. And this is essentially so that it can train the memory and make sure that it's ready to go for Ryzen 7000. That is a lot of time, especially for a brand new system where there's gonna be a lot of new inputs, a new socket, new RAM that is going into it and for it to take very long. I could expect that if this ever comes across first time PC builders, this might uh, cause some concern. However, uh, it turns out that according to reports that this might be specific to an ASRock motherboard here, they put the sticker on there for pre-production models and then it's been fixed with the latest BIOS, but you would have to wait and make sure that your PC is booted in to make sure that you could even do the BIOS in the first place, in which case it would take a long time to do. So hopefully, hopefully this all gets sorted out before the launch on September 27th and that this is only for one motherboard vendor with one specific motherboard and not necessarily representative of the fact that there might be larger BIOS issues at hand that motherboard vendors weren't ready for when it comes to releasing the Ryzen 7000 boards. I think this is one of the things that a lot of people are hesitant about with this new generation. AMD has struggled with BIOS setups in the past specifically for memory, first gen Ryzen was a nightmare for memory compatibility. I remember I had to make a video about how my G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM literally died in the motherboard because just Ryzen didn't, didn't work well with it and then it killed my RAM. It was, it was great stuff. Ryzen killed my RAM. Hopefully we don't go back to the days of memory issues just plaguing everybody who's trying to build a PC. But I, what, what I wanna know more than everything else is if your PC didn't turn on for six and a half minutes, you waiting around, you you holding on to see if something's happening or like is your breaking point around the two to three minute mark? Because six and a half minutes of just pure darkness on your screen, that's, that's a little rough, it's a little rough. But speaking of delayed timelines on things like a PC booting up, it looks like NASA's gonna have to delay the Artemis 1 launch. They attempted to do another launch a few days ago with their Artemis 1 rocket, and there was an SLS fuel leak that made it so that they're even not going to be doing it in this launch period. Essentially, liquid hydrogen is leaking from some quick connect, so they need to figure that out. However, the next launch period that's gonna be available, SpaceX already has books, so it's not gonna be likely until the mid 
to late October that NASA is gonna legitimately try to launch this rocket again to bring us back to the moon. But don't you worry, to the moon goes iPhone. They're going up, the prices, the stocks, all of it, their shareholders, their uh, number of shares in the market, that over half the US market, according to new reports, are iPhones. That this makes under half Android. That's according to a new report out of Financial Times. Apple has the highest active install base in the entire United States. There are other reports that have had the iPhone over 50% for quite some time, but this is the first time that Financial Times is reporting on it. If you look at Stat Counter, it has iOS as the number one installed operating system for quite some time. Every single data point here is over 50%. If you look at the US, however, if you look worldwide, iPhone is more like 25% of the user install base. So don't you worry if you don't live in the US, you're still not gonna be subjugated by the iPhone overlords, not as quickly as you may think. But what comes quicker than you think is uh, crypto stocks. Bitcoin didn't really do any, it's it's just below 20 grand. It's not, it's hippity hopping and bouncing between a couple hundred bucks, Not nothing big. Ethereum up 4.3% to be at 1641 and Dogecoin up 2.6% to be at 6.4 cents. And Reese, you better be up for UFD deals, my friends. I know you get up earlier than I do because you're six hours ahead, but that's still no excuse. Hey everyone, welcome back to UFD Deals. We bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys had a good weekend. And for those who had a holiday yesterday, I hope you enjoyed it too. We're starting off this week going back to basics with the EVGA Supernova 650P5. They're 80 plus platinum, 650 watt, fully modular power supply. This gorgeous little thing is currently going for $68.90, which is 10 cents off the nice number, but that's also $101.09 off the usual price. And in order to keep you and your PC cool after that last deal, the Corsair AF120 Elite, which is their high performance 120 mil PWM fluid dynamic bearing fans, they're currently going for $14.99, which is 40% off and the lowest price in 30 days. And don't forget, you can find all these deals and more linked in the video description. And now I'm handing you off back to the guy who ate spaghetti out of a Ziploc bag and no, I will not elaborate further. Very cool, Reese. I'm so glad that you asked about the USB naming convention and how horrible it is. Let's not forget about the debacle of USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. That was a real thing that the USB commission came out with. And now they have announced that we are getting USB 4, which is there's no space between the B and the 4, whereas previously there was a space between the B and the number. It's USB 4 version two bet you didn't see that coming but it's supposed to give us 80 gigabits per second on current cables allegedly but there's also a secret 120 gigabit per second mode that makes it so that it doesn't use the two symmetric transmitter and receiver setups instead it uses the three transmitter and one receiver so that you could do asynchronous 120 gig send through which means that you could do 8k 85 hertz on a single USB-C cable allegedly according to the USB commission you don't need to update your cables for version 2 I just, I don't even know. But even looking in this article, they're typing it out wrong. USB 4 V2, they're putting spaces where spaces don't belong, okay? But whatever, regardless of how terrible the naming convention of USB is, we can't forget about Kingdom Hearts being way worse. And it could have been worse for you, for the RTX 3090 Ti. You, you could have been calling it an RTX 3090 Super. There's now pictures coming out of a GPU that never were, never was. Kingdom Hearts references the, the something that never was. I don't remember. The games came out so long ago. Catelyn, show them what I'm talking about or I might be making things up. Riku, why did you become one with the darkness? Because I'm the worst. Riku, you horse's ass. You horse's ass. Kingdom Hearts is a confusing setup. Anyways, there's the 3090 Super right there. It has a black shroud as opposed to the silver one, according to speculation. Would have been a black cooler update for the Super, but Nvidia, for whatever reason, decided to go with the tie naming scheme. According to the person who has this GPU, it is just a 3090 tie. There's nothing special about it. it. Has the exact same specs. It just could have been named something different, but we're also getting pictures of an RTX 3080 20 gig which never came out. And now we're also getting pictures of the RTX 4090. Look at that GPU. It's nondescript and you don't know who it's from. Could be from MSI, kind of looks like an MSI card, but there's a 4090 prototype for you. And according to the same people, 
there are two different RTX 4080s in development. So the RTX 4090 is gonna be a 14 layer PCB with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, but then the RTX 4080 can either be a 12 gigabyte model with a 10 layer PCB or a 16 gigabyte model with a 12 layer PCB. And based on how the RTX 30 series went, we were talking about getting an RTX 3080 10 gig or 12 gig, and we didn't know what was happening. NVIDIA doesn't end up launching both of them. They're gonna choose one or the other. I, I mean, I don't see a reason why they wouldn't launch the 12 gigabyte. It's not like they're really competing on VRAM against AMD in the first place. And like, I know AMD fanboys are like to be like, oh, hey, hey, NVIDIA has less VRAM, they suck. When in reality, it just doesn't reflect in the sales. So it's like a, a moot argument, if you would. But in case you need the VRAM, NVIDIA might not be the place to go. But in case you want Intel GPU, Intel might be the place to go very soon, according to more videos coming out from Ryan Shrout and Tom Peterson doing interviews with PC Games Hardware and Digital Foundry. We've got more details on the ARC A750 and A770 GPUs, essentially giving us the specs, saying that the high-end A770 is gonna compete between a 3060 and a 3060 tie and it'll beat the 6600 XT and then we've already gotten details of the a750 so that's going to happen but also saying that it's not going to drastically change in terms of performance so don't expect it to get much better this is the best that they're going to give you and on top of that saying that the a770 is going to come in both 8 and 16 gigabytes for variety in case you want that but if you don't have resizable bars stick with other vendors because this is something that came out in the gamers nexus video and the Linus tech tips video Intel is being very, very clear. If you are not on a modern computer platform that has resizable bar, it is not going to perform well. Intel's GPUs need resizable bar. So if you're upgrading to the next gen AMD, it could potentially work for you. If you're on current gen AMD, it could also work for you. The Intel generations vary, but you can only use it, according to them, only worthwhile if you have resizable bars set up. So it's going to be launching soon in limited quantities and in some countries. But the best part is they admitted that they messed up when they only launched in China with the Arc GPUs, stating that it wasn't a supply constraint issue, but rather that it was a readiness issue. And they didn't realize that Western media would buy whole systems from China just to review the GPU, which like... How do you not have your finger on the pulse that like that's that's some channel shtick that they will get just buy stuff from China and then test like that's how did you not see that coming Intel and it's a little it's a little sus that they're not picking up what the tech community is putting down but if the A770 comes in at the price point of three hundred fifty dollars beating the thirty sixty being competitive with the 3060 Ti, beating the 6600 XT. It's not a bad price point. Intel looks like it's gonna, it's being honest, which is all you can hope for in a situation where they're not gonna be able to compete with the best of the best. They're not trying to oversell us Hopefully, we obviously have to wait for third party reviews, but it does seem like Intel wants to convince you of who needs this GPU rather than trying to say everybody needs our product. They're making it very clear what the limitations are, and I can respect that even if it might not be going in my system. But let me know what you think of Intel's GPUs down below in the comments.